Well, Simon, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Could you give us a brief introduction to yourself and also to Cerberus? I would love to. First of all, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Simon Peters. I'm the CEO of Cerberus Labs, a company uh, based in the United Kingdom in the city of London. And one of three co-founders. And what we do at Zerberus is we are a decentralized risk rating protocol, which is an analogy of a risk rating agency, which is 100% designed in the spirit of cryptocurrencies, which means fully decentralized. So there's no central party controlling the pro protocol. Um, and we're open sourced, which is extremely important for us as we strive to create a consensus about what risk is and what risk means in cryptocurrencies. Mm, yeah. Well, so let's dig a little deeper into that. What are risk ratings, first of all, for somebody who may not be familiar? And then to take that a step further, how does one decentralize a risk rating? That's a wonderful question. So what is a risk rating? A risk rating is, in simple terms, a tool that helps investors in institutions to quickly screen the market and get a better feeling for what kind of assets they're dealing with. We all know there's, there's potentially, there's a paradigm shift. We, we are building the internet of money. This is going to be one of the largest developments in, in, in this half of the century. And there are so many people out there who create new cryptocurrencies and go out with promises to investors and raise considerable amounts of money. And it is our, job to make this internet of money safer for investors by looking actually you know how many how many how the situation is really on on the ground and and how the the, the usage and just the, the general behavior of certain assets look like and that's really the job of service is to be out there and to help investors to get an honest absolutely objective verifiable rating if that is a decent asset or not so what we are faced with is we, 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 we come from traditional asset classes like bonds, like equities, um, like commodities. And now we have this new asset class that is with all certainty, it is an asset, right? I can buy it. I can hold it. It produces yield. But it is more than that. It is a vehicle. It is the fuel um, or the gas, how they say in Ethereum, right? To, to run a decentralized network. And now this is really where, where Zerberus comes in because we put years down of research in really understanding what a crypto asset is as an asset, not as a technology, but as an asset. And we can clearly divide it from a stock. And I, I want to give you another example, how clearly something like ADA is not a stock, right? When, when, I have an, when I have Apple stock, I get dividends paid into my portfolio. That is not true for ADA. I have to do a job to get yield from ADA, right? I, I have to, like, when I own ADA, I, I don't I, I don't have a passive income vehicle. I have a job that can make me income. And my job is to select a stake pool provider. And, you know, in a stock, I, I'm almost guaranteed, right, given market conditions, that I will get my dividends. But I'm not guaranteed that with ADA or any other proof of stake cryptocurrency. I have to do my job correctly and select the right stake pool provider. And if I don't do it correctly, right, in the best case, I don't get rewards. In the worst case, like another proof of stake cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, I'm slashed. So not only do I not get my dividends just no matter what, no, I have to do something actively and I can fail to perform my job. And if every holder fails to do their job, then the network fails. So it, it is something very, very distinct from a stock, a commodity, a bond, a derivative, it's something else. And what, what it really is, is these asset classes are networks. And now we have to understand two things. How do we value a network? And where does risk come from in a network other than pure technology risk? So that technology risk is always its own basket because it's very, very complex and it needs its own strategies. But what Zerbus really talks about is where does the financial risk come from if I own a network? That's a great segue. So uh, maybe you could just tell us, I'm sure it's a very deep and complex topic, but uh, are you able to sum up how you would look at sort of the essence of risk for value of a network? The, the the question is again, what is this token? This token is a vehicle to coordinate a decentralized network. It sounds very complicated, but but every word is very important, right? It is a vehicle, so it is it's, it's a tool to coordinate a network. So I give you one, and that's that's a very very common thing that we see these days is we have token launches whereby you have a very mini like very very small circulating supply and large fully diluted market caps and you have few parties without size stake into that that 
is a very odd thing to see because, as I've just said, right, a token is a vehicle to coordinate a decentralized network. If the network is technically decentralized, but the ownership, the vehicle to coordinate that decentralization is centralized, it defeats the purpose. So, you know, you could make the case that a token is only as valuable as decentralized it is because otherwise the premise that makes the network valuable in of itself is broken. So when we look at tokens, right, we, we often, like, we... we we back founders not to see the token as a primary vehicle to raise funds, but to, to, to see them as value drivers. Like what type of problem, what type of job, what kind of coordination issue do you want to solve with the token and see them as that? And I, I think that tokens need to prove the ability to coordinate, to solve coordination problems. If they do not solve coordination problems, you have two major problems. Number one is you have to ask yourself, is that token even valuable? Because it doesn't solve it. It doesn't, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And the second, and that's a very scary question for, for, for a lot of assets out there, is it a crypto asset? We, we help uh, projects to write tokenomics, and we are, whenever we sit with them, we always ask them, what kind of coordination problems are you trying to solve? If you're not trying to solve a coordination problem, you should seriously consider not to mint a token or actually to mint a security token. So how does Cerberus measure risk within a decentralized network of value? We have a very specific and very narrow way of measuring it. We did it on purpose to be, be very narrow to, to later on decentralize it. But what we do is we map out the transaction from a minting wallet. So you have a token. It could be a layer one token, but it could also be, you know, a project token. And we really look, okay, there's a, there's a minting event or there's a continuous minting event. And how do these transactions develop over time? And what you often get, or always get, is a, is a large node graph. And these node graphs, they're, they're quite famous already in crypto. You see them a lot, like Zach XBZ posts them sometimes for their research. There are a few other firms who have created, like, very nice node graphs, visualizations. However, whenever you see them on Twitter, they're like tiny, tiny, tiny elements of teams. Like these node graphs are huge and they're very, very complex. And what we do, we, when we look at a token, we, we look at this entire node graph at once. So we look at all wallets, their relationship to each other, and the way how they behave. So we look at through time, right? What are the frequencies of behavior? You know, what are the clusters of behavior, right? There, there are certain clusters of wallets who kind of hang together because they're very similar behavior. You can very clearly, you know, separate the opportunistic traders from the holders and, and from, from other clusters like, like the teams. And what we now see, we, we see this composition of different actors forming a marketplace and uh, marketplace around that token. Uh, what you can also see, and that's really, really beautiful if you think about it, and that makes this narrow approach actually very rich of data, right? So you see the investors that are there to invest in a token, but you also see usage, right? Because most tokens, like again, going back to the example of ADA, you can actually see how much a token is used because you see the transaction fees. You can also see how the kind of internal financings look like because you have the treasuries also on chain. And now what you see is you have a very round picture of a token. You know the investor behavior, you know the expectations. Often you see the strategies, you see, again, usage and, and financial viability through their own treasury. So now you have a very, very complete picture. And we believe that in this new age of tr total transparency and open source networks, we do need to have a way to measure risk that is absolutely objective. And especially because there's so much tension involved between projects. And when you start rating them, you have to make sure that your calculations are clear because otherwise people will just don't believe you. And this is, again, why it's so important for us to be open source, to be very, very precise and honest about what we do so that we can have conversations about it. And that's really how we measure the risk. It's really this, we call it wallet graph. That's our idea. It's, it's, we, we lean the term from the social graph. And that's really, it's, it's, it's a social network of value. And we look, how does the social network look like? Does it look sustainable? Does it look, is there usage in it? Does it look, for lack of a better word, sincere? Uh, is, this, is, is this a sincere network being built? That's really what we look for. And you, you quantify these properties of various kinds and automate the reporting on them. Exactly. That's 100% correct. We, we use pretty advanced mathematics for it. We use something like TACML, topological algebra and geometry and, and machine learning. So we could say we're an AI startup. Well, we don't like to do that because everybody does it, but kind of we're a real AI startup. But we, 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 use, we call it TACML. It's not generative AI. It's, it's pure math. And what we, what we really look at, we, we look in these, these massive networks in, in patterns and, and how these patterns behave and correlate certain patterns to price action. So, you know, like pump and dump schemes, they look very similar to each other because people are doing it and it's often the same people are doing it, right? Well, you, you know, sincere networks, 
they 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 look also they they look also a certain way. There's a beautiful phrase that I heard, and I think it's very pliable. You know, uh, happy families always look alike, but unhappy families look, are always unique. And it's the same true for for networks. Like healthy networks do look alike, while you know, like unhealthy networks can be unhealthy for so many different reasons, right? So so and and we we try to to categorize that, but we really focus on on healthy factors, right? Uh, as we discussed earlier, for example, distribution or diversity or wallet clusters. Like we we have an idea what a healthy token look like, and we kind of measure against that. I guess final final sort of question and topic here. Cerberus is measuring risk, but as I understand it, it's also a risk ratings protocol. It's decentralizing this function of, of risk rating somehow. How does that work? How do, how do you um, decentralize a risk rating protocol? That's a beautiful question, and it's one of the most important questions, because if we would just do it centralized, and we, we during the time that we were building Cerberus, it was, it was an option to say, we all do it proprietary, you know, we sell our ratings and our signals to hedge funds, and that's it. A lot of people were, were scared uh, when we said, okay, we knew we go do it completely as a way, we just open source it and make it a fully decentralized protocol. So to understand why we do it and how we do it first, 2008, the financial crisis was partially caused because we had risk rating agencies giving wrong ratings out. And they were giving wrong ratings out because they had an alignment problem, because they were paid by the people who needed the risk ratings to sell on an open market. So it's, it's directly you're aligned with the seller of the security, not the buyer. So what Zerber Zerber's turns it all on is that we say we have one instance of our risk model. Our risk model is insanely computation intensive. So, uh, you know, for, for larger cryptocurrencies, we can spend hundred thousand dollars on on compute so that's a, it's a lot of money so we we have we have one problem which is we have a very very large compute and what we now do is we say we open source our risk model in a node and everybody gets a little shard of that model to compute and set up a Zerberus node uh, you can input its own data let's say you want to run a node for cardano you could mount it on your own um, cardano uh, stake pool or, or as a cardano node the Zerberus node reads out the data transforms it in a format and then computes a specific shard for that so a specific like kind of line like for, for set of tokens for example and now you're not the only person who computes this exact shard but you have a few other nodes who also do it and now in our consensus that's why we it's, it's quite sophisticated but in our own consensus now we, we compare these different outputs from different node providers and then have very a, a kind of a traditional consensus right like what is right like if does the majority agree on this risk rating or does it not and the beauty of that is that once the network is fully decentralized nobody can influence the ratings, right? You really need to have a, a major attack on a network to actually fake these ratings. And that is, of course, beautiful for two reasons. So number one, you have 100% uptime, which is very needed for a, for a system like Zerberus uh, if you build dApps on top of it. And on the other side, you know there's a large community behind these risk ratings and not a single person in the world could fake it, right? You could kidnap me and put a gun to my head and I couldn't change it. So Simon, I also understand that Cerberus uh, has some integrations with the Cardano DeFi ecosystem uh, already. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Cerberus right now is integrated in several wallets. Um, one of them is, is Gero Wallet, which has 20,000 users uh, where people can um, you know, see risk ratings right in a wallet. We'll expand that very soon into, into different features. We're also integrated in Sarah, for example, uh, in Axo. We're also working on uh, a new partnership. Is another major DEX, which is coming out fairly soon. So we are all across the ecosystem. We have even some partnerships outside of the core Cardano ecosystem. So we have a major risk management SaaS platform that uses Cerberus risk ratings panel to determine default probabilities for uh, more professional users. So we have a whole bunch of integrations. We're very happy to aggressively integrate. That's really great. That's uh, inspiring even. All right, well, if people want to keep up with Cerberus, if they want to see what you guys are doing, connect with you, where should they go? So we are very active on, on, on X, uh, formerly Twitter. So you, you can just type Zerberos with an X in the beginning, uh, under, under dash IO, and then you find us. There is a link tree in our uh, Twitter. We have a very beautiful, lively Discord. Our testnet comes live later this summer. And if you want to work on that already, just apply and join it. We are open for a whole bunch of skills. So of course, most of it is quantitative and computer science. However, if you want to be a contributor and you say, hey, I, I love this vision, um, we're also very open to, you know, like if, if you think you have a skill that can help Zerberus, whatever it is, computer editing, public speaking, whatever it might be, just 
ping us and let's see if if you if yeah how we, how we can get you to to join the community amazing well simon thank you so much for joining us